And this evening we are in the famous Bukum Arena, which is one of the achievements of the NDC administration. I'd like to acknowledge my running mates and the incoming Vice President of the Republic of Ghana. Professor Jane Nana Okoko Ajima. I'd like to acknowledge our youth commander, that is the National Youth Organizer of the National Democratic Congress, George Opari Ado, aka Pablo. And his deputies are here, Osman, we are in, rise, rise and let's acknowledge you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, let's go straight to business. Um, this is your day. And um, like I said, we did the Youth Manifesto this morning. And this evening, it is conversation with the youth in the Bukom Arena. Just before I came in, I heard DKB cracking some of his jokes. Hey. Hey, there are two of his jokes I like. The first one, he's standing on the staircase and he's a motivational speaker. He's telling the youth, if you want to succeed in life, you must be very focused. Don't be distracted by anything. Always focus on your objective. Then somebody comes passing. Person who said that you should be focused and not be distracted. He said, cut, 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 cut. He put the microphone down and started following the woman. <laughs> That's the first one. You want me to tell you the second one? The second one, he was talking about how different people fight from different parts of the country. And he started with the gang fighter. He said, Well, man, show to play, man, come on the crane. Tell me now, the gang is the most pushing. Man, come on, man, come on, man, come on. He says, the guy man will tell you what you do to you before the fight starts. Then he said, the town one, he'll tell you who he is. Huh, wouldn't it be? 
I said the worst one is a Zulu boy. What like now, Kubaka? And then you fight. He said the fight never ends. After you finish, the next morning you come. And to acquire your coal and run and maybe until my back, you have a good job. Shout out for this baby. Thank you very much, thank you very much. And so, we all know the season in which our country is. It is a time for political campaigns. We launched our campaign in Tamale about two weeks ago on Saturday, very eventful uh, campaign launch. And I want to thank the people of Tamale and the Northern region for the very warm welcome they gave us during the campaign launch. After that, we kicked off the campaign. I went to the Upper East Region and Professor Nana Jane started with the Central Region. I also want to thank the chiefs and people of the Upper East Region for the very rousing welcome they gave us, the enthusiasm with it does no person, they came on their own volition and came and listened to our messages. I want to thank them. Volta Region, are you ready? Nobinyo? Echo? Meli? 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 until Friday, and so Walter Region to get ready. But this evening, we just came for an interaction, and um, I'm just gonna cut it here, so that we have sufficient time to listen to you. It is about listening to you, and I'll prefer answers and suggestions whenever I can. But you're free to ask questions, you're free to make suggestions, you're free to make comments, you are free to express your opinion. And so, without much ado, I will start. I'm going to be my own moderator. And um, I point at you when I point at you. Uh, they'll bring you the microphone, you ask the question, or you make your comments, or you make your contribution, or express your opinion, and then we'll take it from there. So, we start. Um, who's the first? Who's going to be the first? Yeah, there's one there, in the white shirt. Hello, good evening everyone. My name is Joshua Warren, the popular known as Kaliji. I'm a digital influencer. Um, I'm a chef on Twitter. I cook politicians and all that. Yeah. So, um, I, have, I have two questions. Um, one is about the, um, the brain drain in the country. Um, the Ghana, at the moment, you have a very youthful population. And most of the youth are leaving the country. They are all going to the UK and the United States, Europe, trying to find jobs. Because um, we're told that the payroll is full and there are no jobs in the country. Um, I've, I've seen the 24 hour economy, I've done my research, and I think it's a brilliant point, too, by the way. But aside that, what other policies are being put in place to reduce the brain drain? And also, the second thing is um, a lot of us keep saying that all politicians are friends. So what is the assurance that if you are elected into office again, um, politicians and people that have been heavily involved in state capture will be prosecuted and um, put behind bars? Thank you very much. And uh, Kaliji, I've heard your name. Yeah, my son Sharaf has spoken about you uh, several times. But thank you very much for what you do. Um, like, you see, migration itself is not a bad thing, but it must be organized migration. And so if you look at countries like Philippines, they have organized migration. And so what they do is they give their young people skills training in hospitality, in nursing, 
home care, in uh, seafaring, in so many other uh, vocations. And they organize and export them to other countries. You know how much Philippines makes every year from organized migration? $30 billion. $30 billion a year. And so migration of professionals is not a, entirely a bad thing, but it must happen in an organized manner. And that's why at one point I said that people will leave anyway, but we must face the situation in which when they leave, it is organized departure. And so, for instance, if we have nurses and there's an excess of them and we cannot immediately find them employment, there are countries that are uh, 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 prepared to accept them on short-term work abroad contracts. And so we can sign agreements with those countries and say, look, we're going to send you this number of nurses for two years or three years. Apart from the fact that they'll go earn an income, be able to remit it back home, they also will go and add to their skills in those countries and come back even better prepared than before. And so, if you go to a country like Korea, they are taking what they call foreign workers in different uh, aspects, even in the agricultural sector, just to go and help them to bring in the harvest, pick the apples and all that. And I remember when we were young and in school, some of our colleagues, during the long vacation, they used to jack up to Europe and go and pick apples and things and earn an income, come back and continue. And so, if we organize this properly, it will be uh, young people walking across the Sahara Desert and losing their lives and so on and so forth. But it will be more organized, they will go on fixed term contract, they will work, come back even more experienced than they did before. So it's not exactly a bad thing, but we must work to open the opportunities for our young people in our own country. And that is why we talk about the 24 hour economy. Most of our businesses are running one shift. We go at 8, we close at 5. And so, this morning, a young lady explained it very well. She says the formula is 1, 3, 3. And so, 1, 3, 3 means that one person, one uh, job. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Uta, that is uh, Uta. You, 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 no, I'm talking about the strikes. University Teachers Association of Ghana, Utah. They are the ones you're talking about and the strikes. It's a matter of conditions of service. I'm not part of their negotiations. I'm not part of the uh, 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 bargaining, collective bargaining. So I don't know what the real issues are. But I think that government should give them a hearing. What's the lecturers normally are complaining about is that, that their salaries and their emoluments are not uh, worth, uh, they don't take them home. It is something that affects the generality of workers. Our wages and incomes are low uh, here because of certain factors. And so we came with a single spine salary structure where we put everybody on the universal pay structure. And the intention was that we will all progress together. And as the economy got stronger, we'll be able to pay fairer and fairer wages so that everybody is happy. Unfortunately, two things have happened. This government has disaggregated it. And when they've come under pressure, they have compensated one group over the others. And so once that happens, then the next group to say, oh, then we also are entitled to this. Why are you paying these ones this, and we are not getting this? Then it's forced the whole system. And so that's one of the uh, major uh, issues that is uh, working out here. And so we need to look at how we can pay a fair remuneration to everybody who is working in the public sphere. The second thing is that the economic crisis and the rate of inflation has eroded everybody's income. Inflation went as high as 54%, and even as I speak, it's about above 20%. Every day you go to the market, the prices of goods and services are changing. And so everybody feels emasculated in terms of how much income they are earning. Because if somebody was earning a certain income today, 
In 2017, when the CD was saying five or six to the dollar, today, if the person is earning a certain amount, when the CD to the dollar is 16, then the person has lost out in terms of their income, in terms of their savings. And so one of the major tasks ahead of government is to make sure we stabilize the economy. So that when you stabilize the economy and you improve people's incomes, because inflation is not high, because this, uh, the, the dollar is not running away and breaking jail when you locked it up, it will make people's incomes more meaningful. And so one of our major uh, tasks is to stabilize the economy. And one of the reasons why the econ economy and the income uh, foreign exchange is a problem is because the cocoa sector has collapsed. The cocoa sector is to bring us $2 billion every year, fresh, clean dollars into our economy. Today we can't even make $800 million because this government has mismanaged the cocoa sector. Administration alone is 3.4 billion cities. What are you doing with 3.4 billion cities for administration? And so they've mismanaged that sector. Oil and gas, they've chased some of the oil companies away. E and I moved all their white stuff to Cote d'Ivoire, went and invest, invested uh, almost a hundred million dollars there, and I've made a major find. When they had four compartments they were working on here, unfortunately, in the eight years that this government has been in power, not one single drop of oil more. The oil that they got were two oil fields that I brought into production, ten field and Sankofa, and gave them additional revenue. Since then, they haven't added even one. And so when we come, we have to bring all these people back, let them pump the oil and gas as fast as they can, so that we can bring more uh, foreign currency into our economy and be able to stabilize them. Let me move here. Uh, the gentleman in the white set. And after you, the gentleman in the smoke and the coolie high. Thank you, Your Excellency. My question has to do with um, my friends on the streets. Your Excellency, there is a 10% withholding tax on sport betting. Your Excellency, Uh, yeah, go on. I'm yes, I, I would like to know, and I want you to assure the youth of uh, this country. And uh, you leave this excellency. Take care. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. If you like this, the the matter is still matter. It is still matter. Yeah. 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 This one we deliver every day. If you went up where you know best, it means there's no good job. But withdrawing, let's say thousand cities and I'll take in hundred cities. Yes, and as you know, please retire. Really tired. So right now, I just want you to assure us that if we vote for you, inshallah, 7th January 2025, you'll be sworn in as president. And I can assure you that the street boys. We are for you 24 7 and we are going to police the balance and the last balance is counted, we are not going to the police station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to assume this. If only you are so much and promise and that you are going to abolish the 10% better tax. We are fighting for you, we are campaigning for you, and we vote for you. We will stay at the police station as the last. We are not giving the police station. Thank you. Thank you. One question I'm going to you. This. Ah, uh, you see? Jama? This one. This one will be the yawa of the day. You see? Why is the hustle? 
and the top will be big. <laughs> so like the banks, they do small, 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 get money from government. You see? So I understand, as you know, say this one, it will matter with the concern the youth, plenty, plenty, plenty. So we talk already. Say where we come, eh? the better tax will go remove her. Thank you. 